Not long ago, I used one of my favorite snack foods, Doritos, to make a Dorito burger, and I did a video on it. Well, I'm going back to the well again. Today it's Fritos, and I'm going to be making smoked Frito meatballs. So if you watched my Dorito burger video, and if you haven't, you should, I'll put a link up wherever it goes, over here or over there. It's gonna be a similar process today. We've got these Fritos in a Ziploc bag, certain amount of them, about two cups of Fritos, and we're gonna break these down. We're not gonna crush them so they're pulverized powder. We want chunks because we wanna be able to taste those chunks and feel those chunks in the meatballs. So you wanna make sure that your Ziploc bag isn't fully closed because you don't want air in there and you're gonna hit it and it's gonna pop. Did you ever do that at school with bags of chips? You put them on the ground and psh, step on them and they just go bam. Chips go flying everywhere. That was the extent of my menacing at school. I wasn't very tough. So we're just gonna use a rolling pin here. You can use a pan, your hands, anything you want. The key is we don't wanna break them down tiny, tiny. If some of them seem too big, just hit them again. But really, we do want chunks. This is about what we want, just like this. Little tiny chunks. Now let's mix these up with our 80-20 ground beef and our other spices. All right, so I have two pounds of 80-20 ground beef here, and I'm just gonna start adding the ingredients before we start mixing this all together. We've got our roughly two cups of crushed Fritos. We've got one egg that's been beaten. We've got a teaspoon of Trader Joe's South African Smoke Seasoning Blend. I've used this so many times recently, it is awesome. And a tablespoon of granulated garlic. We're not adding any salt at this stage because those Fritos have a lot of salt in them and we can always adjust later in another part of this cook because there's gonna be a sauce. So let's start mixing. We want to be able to feel these chunks of Fritos in the meat. If you've got any errant chunks of Fritos, just shove them in the meat. Here's our meat mixture with the Fritos, the egg, the spices. Time to turn this into some meatballs. This is about the size we're going to be making. You can see here, it's just sort of a small to medium sized meatball. Not huge, not as big as those smoked meatballs I did a month or so ago. Those things were like little mini meatloafs. You can see the pieces of Frito in these meatballs. Anyone notice I'm using blue gloves today? I ran out of the black ones. Looks like we ended up with 11 meatballs. Somehow I divided two pounds almost equally into 11 parts rather than 12. I'm just good at that. All right, we need to get these out onto the Weber kettle to smoke them with some pecan wood, and then we're gonna finish them in the cast iron pan with a sauce that we're gonna be making. So I have the Weber kettle set up with the briquette baskets on just one side, a cooking grid for the meatballs on the cooking grate. We're gonna be doing this about somewhere around 300 degrees. Uh, it's basically just getting these almost to the point of done before we add them to the cast iron pan and the sauce we're gonna be making. Let's get our piece of pecan on the coals here. And let's get our meatballs on the cooking grid. All right, we're just gonna place our meatballs in here. We're gonna start far away. We don't want them right up against the coals if we can avoid it. I can rotate this if I need to, but this is just a nice little indirect cook with some smoke added. And this odd number of 11 I've gotta fit in here somehow. So I'm gonna shift these around. Just don't want them touching. There we go. All right, we're gonna get the lid on, get these smoking. We're gonna check them in about 20 minutes for temperature. We wanna get them to around 150 degrees before we put them in the cast iron and make our sauce. Bring you back when we're ready to check them. Okay, so our temperature is actually a little higher than 300. We're up closer to 400. That's fine in this, you know, higher heat, get a little color on the outside. Again, this is to get some smoke in there, get these mostly cooked before they go into the cast iron pan with sauce. So let's see how we're looking. Let's check the internal temperature. It's been about 20 minutes. A really good pecan smoke rolling. 
we are already getting some nice color on the right, let's check our internal temperature on this one right here looks like we're at about 120 so we still have about 30 degrees to go before i want to transfer these to the cast iron so let's get our lid back on and we'll check them again in about 10 minutes all right we've done another 10 minutes here 30 minutes total let's check these i think we're going to be ready to transfer them to a cast iron pan we're going to check the same meatball see how we're doing we are good 150 actually 149 close enough <laughs> All right, we're going to first transfer these out into just a baking pan to hold them while we get the cast iron skillet ready. Just going to shake some of the ash off here and add a few more briquettes to carry us through the end of this cook. Five briquettes. All right, we're going to get our cast iron pan on here to start heating up indirect. I'm just going to put the lid back on, give it a few minutes to heat up. All right, our pan should be doing good here now. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, not too much. Maybe a tablespoon at the most. We're gonna add some onions. Move this a little bit more over the coals right now. We're gonna add some garlic. We're just gonna let this sweat down a little bit. We don't want high heat on this, which is why this is perfect. Just heating the pan up indirect and then moving it over the coals. Our onions and our garlic are starting to sizzle a little. Again, we're not trying to brown these or anything. We're just sweating these down a little bit. These are going to be part of a sauce. We're keeping the onions and the garlic over on this side of the pan, directly over those coals there. Get a little more heat. Give it just a few minutes before we start adding our other sauce components. Okay, our onions and our garlic look good. The onions are translucent now, just about all of them. Good smell coming off of them. It's time to add our sauce. We're gonna now move our cast iron skillet so it's indirect. Spread our onions and garlic around. We're gonna add our tomato sauce. Now this tomato sauce, it's a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, one small can of tomato paste. For spices, it has two tablespoons of cumin, two tablespoons of granulated garlic, and one tablespoon of chili powder of your choice, any kind you want. Now, I know there's stories about not using tomato and cast iron. You know, you can use tomato and cast iron. It's just not a good idea to leave it in there a super long time. Like, we're talking, you know, 15, 16 hours. But again, once you use it in here, you're going to need to clean this cast iron. This is going to be cleaned tonight and re-seasoned. Now we're going to add our next special little ingredient. This is crushed up Fritos. You can see that it's almost like a powder, like a cornmeal. And that's gonna get mixed in here. It's gonna help this even thicken a little more and add some of that salt that we want. We can adjust for salt later. We haven't added any additional salt, like I said, because there's a lot of salt in the Fritos. Let me give a little taste and see if we need to add any salt or any other seasoning. That tastes pretty good. Now, we've gotta get our meatballs into this. We are just going to add our meatballs into this sauce. All right, so now with our pan indirect, we are going to put our lid back on and let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Five minutes in, we'll turn this 180 degrees so the other side of the cast iron pan faces the coals. Okay, we've been five minutes. Let's rotate this cast iron pan. 180 degrees and get our lid back on for another five minutes all right we've had our second five minutes let's check this out looking good remember we're doing this indirect we don't want to do this direct and boil this sauce it's already hot but now we're going to add some cheese to the top of this this is just a mexican blend from the store what's going on here we're going to want to let this melt because we're going to put the lid of the Weber kettle back on for about 10 minutes to let this finish. If you want more cheese, you can add more cheese. This is just about perfect for me. I'm going to rotate this again and we're going to let this go for another 10 minutes. 
Okay, we've had a total cooking time of about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. I rotated it once more in there just to give a really even cook on that. Let's see how we're doing. That is looking good. We are ready to get this inside and give it its last little bit of garnish before we taste. All right, here are our Fritos meatballs in this nice chili sauce. This is basically a base sauce for chili without any meat or beans. And our Mexican cheese sprinkled on top. And now we are just gonna garnish with some Fritos. Because these are Fritos meatballs and we are going to enjoy these. All right, time to taste. All right, our Fritos meatballs with that sauce and the cheese and the extra Fritos on top. There we go. It's time to dig in. I'm really hoping this has a crunch in it like that Doritos burger did when I made that about a month or so ago. You can definitely see the pieces of Fritos poking out of this. Here we go. <laughs> That's a Frito meatball. Oh, that is good. That is really good. Mmm. One of the nice things is we didn't have to add any extra salt to this because those Fritos already had the salt in them. They seasoned the meat along with the other spices we used. Nothing else needed. Look at this. Mmm. I think the Doritos burger had a little bit more crunch, but I think that's because the Doritos were a little bit more substantial. Mm. Now, I know people make Frito pie, and that's not what this is. This is just some Frito-fied meatballs where we put some cheese on there, we had that nice chili sauce, and then kind of drizzled some extra Fritos on top. This is killer. Mmm. Mmm. Just as meatballs stand alone from everything else, these are really, really good. Smoking them with that pecan wood before we got them into the sauce in the cast iron pan, perfect way to do these. Great color, great flavor. Pecan is such a mild flavor, but it gets in there. And it really adds to this, doesn't compete with the other flavors. Mm. Now, if you wanted to dial up the heat on this, you could. More chili powder, add chili powder to the meat, anything you want. It's more about the method with this, giving those meatballs just a little bit of time with that smoke and cooking them before they go into the sauce. I know I said it a minute ago, these are killer. These are awesome. Mm. I think I joked in that Doritos burger video that, hey, maybe I should do a series of incorporating snack foods into things you smoke or grill. I think I might. Someone suggested a spicy Funyuns burger. I think that might be up next. Hmm. This is one of the things that I love to do. You have fun with food. You get a little silly. You take something and mix it with something else and you try it and it ends up tasting great. You know, if this didn't work out, it would still taste okay. It tastes great. But if it, even if it tasted okay, it was fun to do. It was a neat thing to try. And that's what I really enjoy about getting out to the smoker or the grill, mixing things up, trying to create things like this. Boy, when they work, that's a nice feeling. Mm. So if you have a favorite snack chip or something like that, give it a shot. Mix it up with something. Try burgers. Try meatballs. Try meatloaf. Try something. See if you can get those flavors to work together. Because if they do, dynamite. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to check out some of the other videos on my channel and consider subscribing. And if you do, click that bell for notifications. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great evening. I'll see you again soon.